Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. We uh, have grandkids in Tuscaloosa, so we were over there, and we knew we were going to come here because we got another dinner in, uh, tonight. And so we were just cruising along, coming over just now. And Chandra calls and says, where are you? And I said, well, we're on our way, and we're going to be probably 30 minutes early. And she said, don't you remember that we are on Eastern time? <laughs> so we're lucky to be here at all, I guess. Uh, I, I would be here for the, for the closing. So, but thank you for inviting me today. We appreciate it very much. The uh, district governor is the liaison between Rotary Clubs and Rotary International. That's basically it. And so it's a, a pleasure for us to have a chance to come be with you. This club has been around a long time. Unless you absolutely know the answer, somebody guess how, when did this or what year did Phoenix City Rotary start? You're going to be surprised if you don't know. 50 or 51. How'd you know that, sir? I've been here almost that long. <laughs> Are you a charter member? Yes. Uh, no, I'm not a charter member. Okay. And you said? I said 50 or 51. Why did you say that? Because I was executive secretary for years and years, and we did a history one time. Oh. <laughs> Does it surprise you to hear that it is, in fact, April 1951? So, a long time, this, uh, this Rotary Club has been in existence. And we need to stay on time here. You got a watch, Roz? I do. Cynthia and I met Roz two years ago. At a, at a meeting. At five minutes till one, you're going to say loudly, mm -hmm. your time is up. I, I can do that. Yeah, okay. Even if I'm in the middle of a sentence. I'll do it. You're going to say, your time is up. A little louder, a little more. Your time is up. That's it. <laughs> and then I'll take 30 seconds to, uh, to wrap up whatever I'm saying, and uh, then Chandra can say whatever else she needs to say. We'll be out of here by one o'clock. I'm in a Rotary Club, 1994, started uh, in my Rotary Club, and uh, so I've been around Rotary for a long time. Months ago, uh, Chandra called me and said, could we have a get-together and just talk about Rotary and give us some exposure to Rotary, big Rotary picture, and, but it always starts with the local club. So no matter what else is going on, the most important thing that happens is in the local club. That's where all the leaders from, every Rotary leader is in a club. The president of Rotary International, who is in Germany, will be in Germany July the 1st, he'll be the president of Rotary International, is a Rotarian in his local club. And I am a former club president. You can't be the district governor without having been a club president. But it all starts with the local club. And you guys have done some great things since 1951. And you should be very proud of um, what the things that you have done. And in the next 20 minutes or so, when you think of something and you want to ask a question, just throw your hand up and we'll try to answer questions. Because the purpose of my being here is to help you, if you don't know a whole lot about Rotary, the big picture, uh, please ask questions, make comments as you, as you want to. Rotary is worldwide. There are 1.2 million Rotarians in over 200 countries. You've got people from every walk of life, every religion, every, uh, I'm a Presbyterian minister, uh, you got every religion. You've got people, all skin colors. Um, Rotary is a wonderful collection of people. And we say everyone is welcome into Rotary. We do not want to be exclusive at all. And so that's an important part of Rotary. There are uh, 32,000 clubs around the world, 530 <coughs> districts. South Alabama is a Rotary district, one of 530. North Alabama is one. 
but we have some rotary districts that are thousand miles wide uh, over in other parts of the world. And in every continent, there are Rotarians. Cynthia and I had the privilege two weeks ago to be at a district governor conference in which there were people there from most of those 200 countries. And it was wonderful because the people are so different. They look different. They talk different. And we ha had headsets and quite often we were in meetings where people were talking languages that we didn't know but we were, we were, uh, had, the, had the headsets on and so they were translating and it was just terrific to be around people who all over the world, we may have a lot of differences, a lot of differences, but we have decided that we are going to get together, put those differences aside and just focus on just a few things. And I'm going to talk about those few things in just a minute. Got to keep the scope narrow. Because if you start talking about some topics, it's going to make people mad. You're going to dig your feet in, and you're going to have dissension. So we just focus on a very few things as Rotarians, and we're very successful at what we do. And uh, I think you're going to find that out. We are 6880, District 6880. We have 50 clubs in South Alabama, 2,300 members. The average size club... Just take a guess. South Alabama average size Rotary Club is 30, 30 a little more, Five. 40, <laughs> 47 is the average size club. This club is about 35, right? Mm -hmm. 33, 35. Right in there. Mm -hmm. So it's a, a good size club. We have a couple of really big clubs and we got a couple of little bitty clubs, six. So when you say, we need seven people to volunteer, oh no, we can't do that. <laughs> That, that, that won't do because we only have six members, but the average size is 47. And we have, high school folks, Interact. And 340,000 Interact clubs around the world. 32,000 Rotary clubs. 340,000 Interact clubs. Is that amazing? That is amazing. And uh, we're we have a conference coming up for uh, for our district uh, coming up. Ryla, anybody, any of the high school folks going to Ryla? Yes, okay, good, 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 good time. Gonna have about 100 high school folks, interact folks there, and uh, you'll enjoy meeting people uh, from different parts of the state, and I'll be there as well, and uh, so we'll have a good time. 340,000 interact clubs in 153 countries. So when Interact Club tries to get together worldwide, you got a lot of people, just like I was explaining a moment ago. Uh, and so that's great. It all started in 1903 with a man named Paul Harris. And that wasn't time, was it? No, okay. So it just flew by, didn't it? Paul Harris started the whole thing. Some of you are Paul Harris fellows. Let's see those hands. I'm a Paul Harris fellow. What that means is I've given $1,000 to Rotary International to do service projects around the world. And uh, so it's a good thing. Cynthia's a, a Paul Harris fellow. I'm a Paul Harris fellow. So that's a good thing. But he started in 1903 in Chicago. And his purpose of starting when he started was to network. He didn't use that word because that word wasn't invented yet in 1903. But the purpose... He said, I would just like to get together with some folks, some business folks, and network. He didn't say that word, but get together and so that I could meet a doctor and the doctor could meet the attorney. And the, he was an attorney. And this person could meet the banker. And it would just be good for business. So it was a business effort. And he started off, there were four of them. And they said, well, this is, this is good because we're getting to know each other. It's going to help business in our area of Chicago, and uh, why don't we meet weekly for lunch? So they started having lunch. And, get ready, sounds like a joke, it's not. They said, why don't we rotate restaurants? <laughs> and that's where the name comes from. You probably, you might have thought it was something a little, <laughs> little spicier than that, but that, that is the honest truth. <laughs> 
So now they, they started off by networking. <coughs> Just business people getting to know each other. Then they said, why don't we meet and eat and do business? And they, lo and behold, they liked each other. And so friendships developed. And one of the great things about Interact, one of the great things about Rotary is that you begin to meet some terrific people. And it's fun. And so they were going, well, this is pretty cool. And I don't know exactly what year they started talking about um, let's, do we want to continue doing what we're doing or do we want to expand? I'm not sure exactly what the timetable on that was. But they were having a good time. Then one day, one of the guys, I think it was all men at that time, four, four men moving around restaurants because they wanted to meet other restaurant people, other owners. And they invited some of those people, the restaurant people, to join with them in Rotary. And then one day a guy said, and this is significant. A guy said, you know, we're getting together. We like each other. We're having fun. As a matter of fact, sometimes we're having parties now so that we take our spouses and our friends get together. And it's a great social thing, Rotary is. Why don't we do something for somebody else? Hey, what a concept. Like what? Well, why don't we go to the city, they said. And see if there's something that we could do to help the city. Some kind of project. <coughs> and that was major when they decided that because that is really the turn now, the direction that Rotary has taken into service projects. Tell me, somebody tell me something that you have done in this club that was a service project. Uh, during Christmas, we went to a local uh, facility for elderly and uh, bought presents, helped them celebrate Christmas. Uh, we go into the schools and read. Uh, we've got a whole list, to be honest. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. We've been around since 1951, right? A long time. So it's a long time. Yeah. So Rotary now, people like to get together and network business. Nothing wrong with that. That's good. And they like to make friends with their fellow Rotarians. That's good. But then we now say the, the, the strong reason to be a Rotarian is because you're going to be involved in service in your community. And that's a wonderful thing. And you also have, as local Rotarians, you have the opportunity, if you want, this, there's no arm twisting, but if you want, you can not only be involved in service projects in your community, but there's all sorts of worldwide service projects. As a matter of fact, Rotary gives away from 70 to 100 million dollars every year. And all kinds of projects around the world. Cynthia and I are right now involved in building a school in Mexico. Well, it sounds like that's our plan. I mean, it's, it's our doing. We have joined some folks who are trying to build a school in a place where there are no schools. The grade school kids, age kids, don't go to school because there's not any schools. It's about 30 or 40 miles to the closest elementary school. Why don't they just drive over? Well, the people are very poor. They don't have transportation. That's why. And so we're trying to help, and in a very small way, we're trying to help do uh, build a school in uh, Mexico, near, near Mexico City. That's what? What was the first service project? What was the surf, first service project the people in Chicago, that's got a good punchline to it, doesn't it? <laughs> the first service project they decided to do when they talked to the community was, to the, uh, to the city, we need a public restroom. Wow. And that's what they did. <laughs> I don't think that restroom still exists today. <laughs> uh, but that was the first Rotary service project. Because it was a need. Don't have to argue that. Do we, is there a need? Absolutely. And uh, Interact. Tell us, uh, t somebody tell us from Interact what, uh, what's a project that you guys have done. <coughs> well, we do a couple of things. We worked with LPS where we go read 
to them during um, Halloween. Or you go read to, to whom? LPS, Lakewood Primary School. Okay, thank you. And we have also worked with the local food bank. We've done the Angel Tree Project, which is where we help out with Christmas for um, children in need, Salvation and Army. Good, good. Uh, from another high school, anybody else? Yes, sir. Uh, we also did that too with food banks. Uh, we we traveled to different uh, organizations and try to get a feeling of like what they do. And for, for instance, Salvation Only, Nashua Valley, and all that. And also, we go to like different elementary schools. Like one time, we went to Oliver to help them out with their little field day. You know, getting to know the kids. We was over the like over the whole. Uh, activity and basically heaven with the rise and all that type of stuff. That's, yeah. stuff we well, that's great. Yeah. There is no right service project. When you decide, let's do something, as, as a guy said uh, in 1900, by that time probably 1904 or 5, let's do something for somebody else. There's no answer to the question, like what? All kinds of things. And if you're paying attention in your community, you see all kinds of things. You run across all kinds of things that you could be doing to help, perhaps in a small way, maybe in a big way. Um, some of the global projects that Rotary does are, are $350,000 grants. And so they might be doing huge projects, but even very small projects. If you read to a child, that's significant. That's a good thing that's worthwhile. You don't want to say, well, we can't build a $350,000 wing on a hospital, so no. If you're, if you're doing stuff with children in your community, what a great thing to do, and it's wonderful. <coughs> so we're still trying to network. When you join a Rotary Club, you meet other people who are in business, and so that's, that's a positive thing. Um, we are also trying to make friends and you make great friends through Rotary. But now we're trying to do something. And I like the fact that someone said, you know, high school students are very good about service. They, they would get involved in this. And so somebody, and I, I don't know, I forget when Interact started, but the idea was, let's, uh, let's have rotor, Rotary for high school students and ask them to be involved in service also. There's another group college age young people and that group is called Rotor Act. So you have Interact in high school, Rotor Act in college or that college age before becoming Rotarians. And all of uh, now is to make friends, network and to try to do some service in your community. Why does Rotary exist was one of the questions that, that uh, Chandra asked. And those three reasons is how Rotary started and is still at the very heart of why we're doing what we're doing. And with a million, 1.2 million people around the world, we're involved in some significant big projects and we're involved in some significant but much smaller projects. And we're very proud to be Rotarians as a result of that. What's something you like about your club? Rotaract, no, not Rotaract, Rotary member, something you like about your club? Food. The food. <laughs> if I'd been on time, I would have had some of it, but I didn't. Some, all right, somebody else, uh, something you like about your club? I like being a Rotarian because the people. Okay. Somebody else? Helping others. Helping others. <coughs> If you are a Rotary Club and you did no service projects, you really wouldn't be a very effective Rotary Club because that's not what it's about. Um, and so people who think it's important to do service to, to other people are the kinds of people that Rotary attracts. So, um, so that's important. Interact, something you like about your Interact, interact Club. Um, I like helping like, the community. Helping the community, good. She said, seeing the look on the children's faces when we read to them. Cool. That's great. I 
I'd say, say clever, uh, <laughs> I'd say being able to have a plausible way to help my community and be given the opportunity to help others. Okay. And I hope that never ends. Uh, whether it's through Rotary or some av other avenue, I hope all of us always believe that that's an important thing to do because it really is. One, one more, interact. Something you like about you have two over here, being an interactor. Yes. Unity. Unity, which comes as a result of what? Service projects, basically. Okay. One more. To all be able to inspire others who not have the same opportunity that they can make a change in the world. Okay. Inspire other people to do the same kinds of things, he says, and uh, maybe change the world. So uh, all of that's all of that's good stuff. I have we have one more. <laughs> Sorry. Um, no. I like knowing the impact that I'm making. Like what I'm doing has a purpose and it's going to make a difference. And how do you know that? Because I can see the looks on the children's faces, like she said, and I right. know that when we go to the food bank, we're making a difference in these families. Okay. Great. <laughs> Fantastic. Keep on doing the things that you are doing. In your club, it's been going on since 1951. And uh, keep doing that. You're part of a district, and occasionally you may hear something that, that from the district, starting July the 1st, it will be coming from me. Everybody, by the way, everybody works only one year as a, as a uh, club president, your club president for one year. If you're the district governor, you're district governor for one year. If you are the president of Rotary International, the whole thing, it's for? One year. One year. And I think there's a lot of strength in that because you lose some continuity, I guess, when you're turning over leadership so much. But you got a lot of people out there that are good leaders. And if you only serve one year, you don't have time to start building some sort of bureaucracy because the next person is coming right behind you. And I, I think um, I like the fact that even the Rotary International President only serves one year and everybody is a volunteer. Uh, Jory, Jory Jones is going to be at a conference uh, in about three weeks. Uh, Cynthia and I will be there as well in Chattanooga and the President of Rotary International starting July the 1st will be there from Germany and uh, but only for one year and I noticed uh, I noticed your banner this is the banner between starting last July 1st until now Rotary connects the world and the new one is going to be you can't see it but there's three doors there door number one door number two door number three and it's going to be the the uh, motto during the year is going to be uh, Rotary opens opportunities, and certainly it does. So, uh, Jerry, you're going to hear that. You're going to see that. You're going to see the doors, and you're going to get a pin of the doors, and you're going to hear a lot about uh, Rotary opens opportunities. Comments, questions, any other thing that you're thinking? I wonder. Uh, maybe. Uh, wish I could ask. Now's the time. Been a, a big focus of Rotary. 30, so we're about to eradicate polio. Oh yeah, thank you, thank you. That, yeah, that's huge. Thirty years ago, there was a Rotarian who had a loved one who had polio. Younger people don't even know what polio is because we don't have it anymore in the United States. And so it was all over the world. And Franklin D. Roosevelt, President Roosevelt, had polio. And Hundreds of thousands of people had polio. And sometimes it just crippled you for life, sometimes it killed you. And so this Rotarian who had a loved one who had, uh, who had polio said, wouldn't it be nice if we could eradicate polio from the face of the earth? And they said, how in the world would that happen? How, how could we possibly do that? And for what reason, I'm not sure, they decided to, to, to choose the Philippines to do a sample. And there was a guy named Salk, S-A-L-K, who had invented a vaccine that he thought would stop polio. And so they 
immunized all the children in the Philippines. And in about three or four years, there was no more polio in the Philippines. And so Rotary really got behind it and started fundraising. And we have now eradicated, it's not just us, there's, there's World Health Organizations, there's country, the United States of America gives money to the, uh, to the project. Countries, health organizations, people around the world are now helping to end polio. And polio only exists, the people who had it still have it, but only new cases in two countries in the world. And it used to be all over the world. But one Rotarian said, wouldn't this be fantastic if we could wipe this out? Uh, Jerry, thank you for, for bringing that up. The two countries, Afghanistan and Pakistan, and it's a religious thing for those folks. They believe that this is some sort of gimmick or some sort of uh, we want to get want to get in your Jerry, your time is up. I got thirty seconds. <laughs> Glad to be here, late, but but here, and uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, it was fun meeting Roz a couple of years ago, and hearing about your club. Thank you, Interact, for being here today, and I hope that this has expanded your horizons a little bit about what Rotary is about. I hope that if you go to, if you go away to school or if you get a job or something in an area where they have Rotaract, you might consider it's, it's the same thing you're doing now. Um, and uh, then one day perhaps Rotary Club as well. I have a suspicion that Rotaract clubs are going to be allowed to become Rotary Clubs in the future. I just, that's just a prediction, but uh, I think so. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed it. We'll see you again. <laughs>